Good morning, grass monkeys. It's so funny because on a few of my videos over the last couple years, I started some of my videos off saying, what's up, grass monkeys? And uh, I met a guy the other day on YouTube that uh, has a business actually called Grass Monkey Lawn Care. That's awesome. Super cool, super cool. Uh, so what am I doing today? Um, well, I am playing basketball. No, I'm not. I'm actually no good at basketball. You really don't want to see me play basketball. I look like a... I don't know. It, it looked pretty bad. It looked pretty bad. Um, but every time I go in Napa, those guys always give me stuff. I gotta have 30 different style Napa hats sitting in my house and I think my wife gets irritated because I leave them laying around all the time. But hey, what are you gonna do, right? Um, better leave my dirty britches laying around but uh yeah so I mean, every time I go in there they give me stuff basketballs for the kids freaking they've given me t-shirts hats whatever whatever their promotion thing is but I have a commercial account with them and <clears throat> I know all them guys and a couple of them I fix their lawnmowers for them and things like that they're really good people in there but anyway um, I had to come up and get some oil for this truck, the GMC, because the light came on yesterday and said, check oil, bastard. No, I didn't really say that, but it did say check oil, or um, change oil. Oil change due, something like that. I don't know what the hell it says. Oil change due. Um, but yeah, so I'm going to change the oil in this thing today, and... I had to order new shocks because I think the shocks are getting a little worn out in the front end of this thing. This is the truck I plow with and uh, I really have over the last couple years of plowing with it I haven't replaced anything in the front end but like you guys know I don't beat the crap out of my truck or my plow and uh, I put last year I put Timbrins in the front end of this thing. If you don't know what Timbrins are Google it. Check it out. Uh, they make a world of difference. Um, I don't care if you have a 1500, 2500, 3500. I don't care what size truck you have. They can make a difference for you. And that's not a sales pitch. I'm not advertising for them. I'm just saying they, uh, they're they awesome. So, and you can get them for, what they do is they, it's it takes five minutes. I did it right in my freaking driveway. I just jacked up the truck a little bit. You take a pry bar or big screwdriver or anything and the, they're just rubber bushings about that tall and they go in between the body and the frame and you just go bloop and you pop them right out you take the other ones you set them in there you kind of twist them so they're tight and you let the truck down and as the truck comes down hits the frame it pushes them right in done no tools no nothing other than screwdriver or pry bar or whatever but uh anyway what it did is uh when i lift the blade of my truck or if I, when I left the plow blade on the truck, it was dropping the front end of my truck about three and a half inches. And now that I have the timbrens in there, when I lift the blade up, my truck sinks in the front end maybe a half inch. So they make a huge difference. They keep from putting all that extra weight on the on the front end of the truck. Well, they keep from putting all that pressure on all your front end parts. They keep the truck from looking like this when you're going down the road with this being the front end. You know, you see a lot of trucks like that. Um, but anyway, so I think my shocks are getting a little tired out in the front. And uh, I run the gas Magnums in my trucks. Those are really, really good gas shocks. They're made by Monroe. And uh, I don't run air shocks. I know you can adjust the air pressures and this and that. I don't run any of those other shocks. I run straight gas shocks. They're really good. They're heavy duty. Um, but uh, so I just had to order a set of them because they didn't have any in stock. They're like 50 bucks a shock, and I'm just replacing the front ones. The rear ones are good. But you can also get them timberins in the back, which I'm going to put in the back end of this thing because with that new trailer, the enclosed trailer, when I put the trailer on, it sinks the ass end of this truck quite a bit. Um, the truck has no problem pulling it. Um, if you guys go back in my videos, you'll see that I had that. Um, I had my training pulled out bulletproof to rebuilt and put back in um, but uh, and the engines plenty strong enough to pull it so um, it's just that it sinks the back end of the truck and I don't like that so I'm gonna put them in the back too to, to stop that but um so yeah it is I don't know what it is I don't know it's March 8th it's March 8th and it is 748 in the morning and I want to nap and I'm on my way back home already um, but it is supposed 
supposed to get into the 60s today. It, it hit 60, 61 yesterday, and it's supposed to, they said a good chance it could actually hit 70 tomorrow. Um, but it's supposed to rain like tomorrow right through to like Saturday or something, but I don't care. I'll take a little bit of rain. Nothing. It's not supposed to be anything bad. I'll take a little bit of rain with these temperatures because we don't see these temperatures in March in my area. Um, it's still usually in the 30s or 40s. 40s is a high, but usually the 30s around this time of year. Um, so I'll take it. And they were saying it's just going to be those temperatures for this week, but now they're saying it's supposed to hold those temperatures till at least the next two or three weeks. So bring it on. Um, so what I'm doing today is uh, I'll show you guys the inside of the trailer. I bought these new hooks. I stole them. Stole them. Um, if you guys know what the track system is, they used to sell at Home Depot. You can screw the track to the wall and hang all these different style hooks from it. Well, Home Depot decided to go with a different style, so they clearanced all that stuff. My buddy called me up and told me they were up there clearance. Now, each one of these hooks goes from $11 to $14 a piece. He said, dude, they have like five of them left, this certain type of hook, and they got them for like $2.40 a piece no track left. I go, well, that's fine. I have the two by four screwed across the wall in my trailer. Anyway, I'll just screw the hooks right to there. And I'll drill holes in the plates that are on the back of the hook that goes on the track system. And I'll just run screws to there. Screw them right to that board. Well, I got up there and they did have about four or five of them there. Well, I looked up above and there's all these boxes up on the shelf. So I started pulling boxes down, pulled out my knife, I cut all these boxes open. They have boxes, all different style of them. Every one of these were clearance from like $13, $14 a piece down to like $1.40, $1.70 a piece. I ended up buying like 20 different hooks. I spent like, you know, like 40 bucks or something, whatever the heck it was. And I got like $200 worth of hooks. Um, so that's what I did Sunday. I pulled out, once I got home from church, I, uh, I pulled the trailer up, I pulled the mowers out, and I went through... Uh, pulled all the stuff down off the walls of the trailer and I put all new hooks up and stuff and uh, I'll show you guys that in a little bit here um, but the last thing that I need to do before the season breaks off here is I would like to get the oil changed in all the mowers which I have all the oil all the filters you guys see inside my garage you see a stockpile all that stuff um, and I stockpile fuel filters too, so I'm going to change fuel filters on everything that needs it. I'm going to change oil and everything. I'm going to pull the blades off everything, get the blades all sharpened, and then everything will be done. Um, I had to change something with the fuel cell. I think I told you guys about before, and the parts for that should be in today. Um, I got a really good deal there too. I'll explain more there. I have a feeling this is going to be a long video. Um, but uh, a lot to go over, a lot to do. Um, but anyway, so I'm going to get that done today, and then everything's done. Everything's ready to go. I'm ready to rock this season off. I'm ready to break into it and start pounding stuff out. And uh, I'm super stoked. I have to, uh, that buddy of mine I made the video on that had the heart surgery, he's uh, he's doing great. He's back to work already. He was supposed to take all this week off, but he didn't. And he's back to work already, but he's feeling great. He's doing great. His wife's got him on a nice, heart-healthy diet, which he's perfectly happy with. He's enjoying the difference in food and... Uh, it's really working out for him, so super stoked there, kudos to him, um, <clears throat> but he has like a late 90s Ford F-150 pickup that's just seen better days, the engine's on its way out, body's all rotting off it, and it's just been one thing after the next, so he's been looking for trucks, I've been scanning like crazy trying to help him find trucks, because if he buys a hunk of shit, I'm going to get stuck fixing it. Um, <clears throat> and with the season coming up, I just do not have the time for that. So, um, Kyle from Creekside Landscaping in Wilson, he's got a YouTube channel too, uh, Creekside Landscaping. Check him out. He's selling, he just bought a new diesel truck, and he's selling his truck. Uh, it's a Chevy Silverado. It's not much different than this. It's a, This is an 05, but his is, this is an 05 GMC Sierra. His is a 01 Silverado and has a snow dog plow on it and he, he's selling that because he just bought a new diesel. And uh, so I talked to him last night and he's offering me a really good price on it. Um, so we're going to, as soon as my buddy gets out of work today, he's going to come to my house and we're going to cruise out there and check out this truck and uh, hopefully it's a good truck for him and uh, he'll scoop that up and then he'll be good to go down the road. 
but so that's the plans for today supposed to be nice and warm out we're gonna see what happens and uh busy 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 super happy super excited ready to break this season off and man i'm ready to go i am ready 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 to go Okay guys, this is pretty much my setup for 2016. There's a dually back there that you guys have all seen a million times. <clears throat> Changing oil on the GMC. This is my trailer. It is seven foot wide, 14 foot long with the Vinos. Okay. Um, I was telling you guys before in a video about handles. It didn't have these handles on right here. So I put that handle on it only came, oh it is tandem axle for those of you wondering, it only came with this handle here, which was really inconvenient, so I put another one over here as well. I got a two pack of them, the two pack of them was like $8, okay? So, this is pretty much it. I mounted, I see I screwed a 2x4 to the wall. Okay, because the metal studs run straight up and down on the walls. Up there in the front, they run crossways. So I screwed a 2x4 of the wall, and I put the mount on there for this water cooler, which will sit there. Uh, the handheld blower's there. That's one of those hooks I bought, like $12 a piece. I got them for like $1.40 a piece. So the handheld's there. Okay, and you'll see I put the 2x4 down this whole wall, which is how I had it before. And there's more of those hooks there and you'll see there's the style hooks there for the trimmers and those up there were like $13 a piece I got those for those are the ones my buddy called me about I got for two dollars and forty cents a piece okay then you'll see those hooks there those were normally I think just over 12 I got them for a dollar seventy a piece I put those ones down there to keep the weed whackers from swaying side to side uh, last year I had just regular hooks up there and I hung the weed whackers with the head of it down below Well, you'll see the black mark on the wall there. That's from these handles swaying Which means the heads of my weed whackers were smacking together and That's what I wanted to get away from Okay, so now they're all hanging this way Which is how I want them straight up and down with the head of the trimmer up top So I have the new um, FS 90R I just bought um, in like December I told you guys about in another video that hasn't even been run hasn't even had gas in it yet so I got that one there I got the echo that I bought last year that I really like um, that's the SRM 225 I bought that one from Home Depot for like 200 bucks phenomenal weed whacker and then I got my steel um, hedge trimmers that extend out they go in all different directions um, up front you'll see there's the bagging system I made for the skag and I was telling you guys when I made that platform, I made it so I welded hinges to the platform and then bolted the hinges to the mower itself. So I can just flip it up out of the way when I'm not using it. I was going to put a type of hook on there. And then I got one of those uh, grip right straps. They're like, you just twist them like a twist tie. They're strong. And I figured that's, it holds it tight. It's going to make it much quieter. It's a lot easier to hook up than just fabbing up some type of hook on there um, I still got to paint all that I built that over the winter you guys saw that um, so that all still needs to be painted I'll pull it off and paint it all before the season starts um, and there's my fuel cell let's see here I'm just going to move some stuff real quick this is pretty much my setup for the year so that's how I got set in here I will pull this out of here Okay, so yeah, there's the X mark I bought, guys. Oh, I end up switching those things out. Look, I did find these. I found them for four dollars and ninety nine cents a piece on uh, on eBay. They were under bump stop. I was looking under the wrong thing. That's why I couldn't find them. So I end up taking out them ones that I'd put on there, which I still have if I ever need them. Uh, if you guys watch that video, so there's the new ones I put on there. Much better. Uh, we'll see how they hold up. Uh, there's the brand new tires I just put on there. And let's see here. Okay. There's the platform there. And you guys had seen how I did that. I cut out the original piece that went the hole with and uh, put the padding under it again and glued it down. This is the new piece I replaced. I showed you guys that in another video. Um, and that is the Hexmark Vantage 36. 
Um, so that thing's ready to go. I just, I need to change the oil in it. I already put a new fuel filter on. I need to change the oil in it, which I'll do today. I put new plugs in it, new air filter. Um, and then here's my Skag I bought last year, 48. Um, here's my problem. I'll show you guys. This fuel cell, I hope you can see this in here, sits on there like that. And it has that straight spout that comes out of it. Okay. The new one I ordered today. Now I looked all over for one of those spouts that come out the top. I looked all over for the one that curves over. So my hose is down at an angle. Yeah, I got just some oils up there, hedge trimmers up there, fire extinguisher, safety kit, stuff like that. This is just my basic setup. Oh, and I put, I think I showed you guys last year, I got my thing of line up there. Um, I'll show you real quick what I'm talking about with that uh with that line so that piece comes straight out of the top of the pump there and oh here's the other three steels i bought last year there's one there one there one there i'm not even using them here's the line okay this is the line that comes out of the top now you stick that end in whatever you're fueling and you just crank it for every 12 revolutions you get a gallon of gas um i had to hold up on the top where the hose comes out to keep it from kinking over well see that hole it ended up tearing a hole right through it because i wasn't watching it every time and so what i want is the piece that comes out and curves over so then the hose will attach to that and the hose is always going downward at an angle i don't have to hold it um <clears throat> to find that piece i couldn't find it anywhere no matter where i looked i tried to find an alternative everything well i found on ebay you can get the whole new pump the shaft that goes down the tank the rotary pump itself and the nozzle that comes out of the top and curves over which just screws in you can screw it out so i'm going to take it and put it in that one which that should be in today um and the whole entire setup everything was 26 bucks so um i'm going to put that on today when that comes in um but for right now i'm going to get these mowers out change the oil on them and change the blades or sharpen the blades i'm going to pull all the blades off sharpen all the blades that uh, Xmark Vantage came with a brand new set of Gator mulching blades on it. They haven't even been run. The stickers are still on the blades. The uh, the coating that comes across the edge of the blade that you got to sharpen off so you have a nice sharp edge. Um, that's not even off of them yet. So it's a brand new set, uh, which will be fine for spring and fall. Um, I think I mentioned you guys before in my videos. Uh, spring and fall, I run Gator blades on my mowers, but during the summer. Um, I run super high lifts. That's what I run. You can get the regular high lifts. You can get the super high lifts. I run the supers. It grabs that grass and just sucks it straight up before you cut it, which allows me to go a lot faster and still get a cleaner cut. Uh, with regular blades and gator blades, if I go as fast as my mowers will go, it leaves stragglers behind. Um, and I get a perfect 30 degree angle on my blades every time I have a neary blade sharpener um, and it's dialed right in. Um, so my blades would be razor sharp, uh, and I can fly and I still leave stragglers with those kinds of blades. Um, I don't know if everybody's mowers do, mine do, I've run them on everything from walk behinds to standards to zeros, and the same issue every time. Um, so I gotta go a little bit slower. So during the summer, when I don't need all that mulching capabilities, I just run the super high lifts. Um, I keep them nice and sharp, and, uh, and I can fly. And, uh, and it leaves that nice perfect cut every time so so that's the deal but uh, all right time to do some maintenance all right guys so here's the deal I had that show down in there for a while take this out of here this screws in here all that for just this one piece So all I needed was this one piece. That's snug. It's going in straight, so it's the important part. Well, let's do this. Screw this back on there like it was.
so I wanted that. And this here, well, if I turn it like that, it's going to hit. So, I guess, I don't know how much more I can screw this in, but put it like that, so it comes out and it down. So, that's it. I just attach my hose to here and I'm in a downward angle. It's not sticking up. I don't have to hold it the whole time. That's that. Okay guys, these are those brand new blades I just took off the X mark. See, still got the tags right on them. Still got the coating on there. We're going to get that off there, run them through the sharpener. And came with a brand new set of blades. One thing did make me nervous. When I just drained that oil out, it came out like water. And it smelled like a cleaner, not gas. Uh, smelled like a cleaner. So I'm wondering if he put something in it before he stored it for the winter. Um, but I just changed it, put fresh oil in it, fresh filter in it, and uh, I ran it for like 10 minutes, shut it off, waited, checked it, and the oil's still nice and clean, doesn't smell like gas or cleaner or nothing like that, and uh, I think it's good to go. What I'll do is I'll, uh, you guys know I've mentioned my videos before, 90%, um, maybe even all of them, I don't know, but most um, mowers in the manual it says change oil every 50 hours oil and filter every 100 hours um, some of them say every 100 hours for everything um, and there's no 50 hour increment what I do because I run my mower so much um, and I buy oil in stock to where I get it for like a dollar 74 a quart and I buy uh, oil filters in bulk too um, so I get them pretty cheap what I do is uh I change everything every 50 hours. Um, oil and filter every 50 hours. So what I'll do, as soon as the season kicks off here, I'll, uh, I'll watch real close. I'll keep checking that oil and watching real close. I check them every day anyway, but um, <clears throat> I'll keep an eye on it and I'll keep an eye on the way it's running. What I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run that one for about 20, 25 hours and I'm just gonna dump that oil and filter and get it right out of there and then put fresh stuff in it again. That way the oil that's in there right now will have a chance to clean it out uh, anything that's left in there, but um, all right, so I'm gonna show you guys something real quick. This is this is a Neary blade sharpener, and if you guys go back to my videos, you'll find out the wicked deal I got on this thing uh, last year. But anyway, um, some some say 35 degree, and some people like to sharpen at that. I like to keep mine at 30. Um, I like the blades at 30 degree. They seem to last a lot longer, cut a lot better. So what I do is I have this right here that I got from Home Depot. It's a magnet, and it gives a degree of the angle. I just set it right on there, and I see where it's reading at. And right now it's reading right about 30 degrees. So that lets me know that I have that right where I need it. And uh, and that's it. That's that's all I do. That's as simple as it gets. Um, and I just sharpen them right up. So let's get this coating off of these and uh, see what happens here. All right, guys. I just uh, I have my angle set like I showed you guys, and I just run the blade back and forth in there. I uh, I try to make sure it's the same amount of times on each side of the blade, and then I have a nail that hangs on the bench. And what I do is I rest them on there for a minute and check the balance on them. Um, just to make sure that the blades are still balanced. It's very important if you don't want to destroy your spindles and everything else under your deck. So uh, make sure you check the balance on them. And uh, bam, that's it.
that's it. I just use a battery powered impact and uh, with an impact socket and run them on, run them off. That's it. I don't torque them to any special specs. I know there's specs for torquing these. I don't do it. I've been doing it this way for years. I haven't had one come off yet. Um, but that's it. And nice and sharp and they're ready to go. Alright guys, so this is the Ferris. You guys have seen this before. I'll show you some stuff here in a minute. Uh, changing the oil on this one's easy. It's just, uh, you know what, that's that one. Taking this nut off here in the end, and it drains right out that hose. Yep. Sometimes it drains slow, but we will just pull this off here and let some air behind it. And I don't know if you can see down there, it's coming out faster. That oil is still pretty good. I think I changed this one right at the end of the season. Not really sure. I can't remember, so change it anyway. Better safe than sorry. Alright, so what I did with this, guys, is you guys have probably seen this in the other video I made. I replaced all these bushings there, 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 because this whole thing was wobbly going all over. I replaced the bushings up in there. Um, pulled all these right apart, re-greased all them. Um, I took out the old flip toggle switch and put a regular PTO switch, and I was just on and off like that. And here's where my issue was in the front. If you remember correctly, these were shot with the shaft that comes up. It was all oblong, and they flop in there back and forth, and the deck would lift up and down while you mow. So I got those, put new ones in, new rims with run-flat tires, and did that on both sides and the other thing okay now when you when you have a fixed deck mower walk behind some standards are like that but when you have a fixed deck mower um, you can change the height of your cut up and down by moving the spacers above or below the blade um, my standard what I cut 90% of my lawns at is three and a quarter inches so that's where it's set right now um, but you can do a quick set by moving these spacers you know, right now it's at three and a quarter, so I take one out and put it up on top, and that'll drop me down a half inch. These are all half inch increments. Well, I wanted to be able to adjust in quarter inch increments, so I ordered these. I got four. I'm going to pull a half inch spacer out of each side and put two of these in. That'll make up the half inch, but then I'll be able to adjust it in quarter inch increments. I think I paid... Uh, the part number is rotary 10-6885. I think I paid like 11 or 12 bucks for all four of those. But uh, I'm going to do that today, get the oil changed in this, get the blade sharpened on this, and this will be ready to go too. I have had a small issue with this. Um, when I move the speed control all the way forward and I'm going, as soon as I squeeze one of the two handles, it turns left or right or reverse, um, the handle for the speed control comes all the way back and it slows the mower right down. When I let go of the handles, it should go back forward and it's not. Um, I think I have some issues uh, down underneath where it all connects and where the uh, where the grease is inside the uh, inside the mechanisms there. I think some of it might be hardened up and clumped up. And I'd pulled it all apart before and I thought I got it all out of there. I don't know. Um, more stuff I got to play with, but. Uh, but yeah, so that's the deal with this, changing these out, and then uh, putting the other spacers in there, changing the oil on it, getting the blade sharpened. Alright guys, so with these, these are a lot easier than the X-Mark and the Skag. I don't have to jack these up, I just take a jack stand, pull it up, lift up on the motor. Put it like that. That's it. Well, this one here, blades on it too. 
see there's a ton of tiny little spacers in there but this one here those blades are pretty sharp see I barely ever use this mower that's why oh yeah those are sharp well it's one last thing I gotta do I guess I don't have to sharpen the blades on this one all right well time for more fun on this one all right guys one thing that I do like to do is you'll see like down in there see all that grit and grime and build up all over I like to take the blow gun and I just uh, blow all that crap out of there every once in a while it gets built up in there pretty good um, I usually stay on it with my weekly maintenance um, at the end of every week I blow all the crap off there and blow all the leaves and everything off the whole mower everywhere especially the hydro motors down in there um, I do it to all the mowers and then I pressure wash them uh, and I lift up the deck and I pressure wash under the deck because uh, it's a hell of a lot easier than scraping them to be honest with you <laughs> and uh, if you guys have watched my videos in the past you've seen what I say about scraping uh, your decks definitely got to do it every week every week at least once a week sometimes multiple times a week I'll do it during the middle of the day it just all depends on what I'm mowing uh, but you don't want to let that crap build up in there um, so I just hook the gun up and uh, blow all that crap out of there and get it off there so the engine the more grease and stuff stays on there um, everything runs hotter your hydro pumps your wheel motors your engine itself everything runs hotter you got to get that stuff off there so your engine and and the pumps and the wheel motors and all the stuff can breathe it's got a vent so the cool or so the hot air will dissipate and come off there um, but yeah so that's what I'm going to do now and uh, that's pretty much it um, getting this maintenance done getting everything ready to go and uh, you know not everybody does things the way I do them not everyone uses the brands of oil I use or the filters I use and you know I'm not saying my way's right and your way's wrong uh, I just got to go with what works for you. I've been using the same stuff for years and years. I've switched up different times when I found a better product, but uh, I never have an issue with what I use, never have yet, and uh, so I'll keep doing it. It's what works for me. But um, thanks for spending the day with me, guys, and that's it. I'm out.